Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Beer News. Now we've got a few stories to go through today, but probably one of the most kind of uh, fluid ones is about Black Sheep Brewery. And the 11th of April um, this year, Black Sheep Brewery, who if people don't know is a kind of brewery of uh, kind of Paul Theakston and uh, the kind of remnants of Theakston's brewery after it was sold was became the kind of uh, the new brewery and has made some good award winning beers like Rig Welter and things like that and although Paul Theakston is no longer with um, officially um, Black Sheep as a board member or a director or anything like that. He is like a, still acting as an ambassador. And as far as I know, his two sons um, still work with uh, or work for Black Sheep. Although I'm not sure in what capacity. So uh, just to kind of give you a wee kind of bit of background. So it's quite a good brewery and uh, it's made some quite some good, you know, it's made some good beers and has quite a good reputation in the UK and uh, it was put up for sale or possible merger in April 11th and then last week they announced that uh, the share option to buy the shares was no longer um, on offer and the brewery was no longer up for sale. This week, which is the first week in May, it's basically going the other way now and they're calling in the administrators. So while they're saying that uh, the brewery isn't up for sale, well, maybe not officially through a share offer, but it looks like potentially it could be up for sale because they're bringing in the administrators and the best case scenario is that the whole brewery is sold off as a growing concern complete rather than the worst case scenario of it being completely broken up and uh, we lose the brewery completely. So not the best news to start with and a bit disappointing, but again, it seems to be that there's a situation going on with uh, the brewery and a lot of breweries in the UK and probably around the world right now is that the costs have gone up, not just the kind of the ingredients, kind of raw material costs, but production costs have gone up. And unfortunately, because of the way things are in the world, that it's quite difficult for breweries to really put the prices up to kind of pass on these costs when the customers are struggling for money and they're going through a hard time as well. So all in all, it's not a particularly good situation, which I'm sure many of you know about either directly or you can see what's going on around about you around the world so not a good situation and definitely not a good period for fans of the Black Sheep Brewery's products and obviously their workers and everything else I'm sure it's probably um, a bit of a dicey time for them and well going by the response online um, from the brewery itself the last kind of official stuff they were doing was first of all they announced that they'd got was it 22 tonnes of malt delivered, so they're going to be still um, soldiering on and uh, brewing beer over the next few weeks anyway. And they also got, uh, they did a kind of thank you announcement on Twitter to say that uh, the response and the well wishes they were getting from a lot of their kind of uh, customers um, has been really, really good and heartwarming. And uh, a lot of people have been trying to support them by buying directly from the brewery and their online shop rather than buying from because the problem is there's a good chance that well first of all if you're buying it from the supermarket the brewery might have already been paid for these products so you're not actually adding any more money into the kind of uh, the banks of the brewery what you're basically just doing is reimbursing what's been paid out by the supermarket Plus also it's not the best profit margins buying from the supermarket because 
the supermarkets to take quite a big cut, so buying it from the supermarket doesn't actually really mean you're supporting the brewery in the best way anyway. So they've had a good response from the customers going by what they've been putting on Twitter and a lot of people have been buying directly from the brewery online shop to help kind of support the brewery and hopefully try and kind of improve their cash flow, even just for the, the kind of small term right now or the immediate term right now. So that's not a good story to start with, but it's quite an important one. So um, I don't know if anybody has any kind of comments of what they think of what's going on with the Black Sheep Brewery and whether it's uh, got a future, whether even in general, does the smaller kind of breweries really have a future as well under the kind of present market? Because it always seems to be that every time there's a big downturn in the market, the bigger kind of uh, corporate brewing companies just seem to get bigger and bigger. And uh, it's the, we lose small ones, either being bought over and engulfed by a corporate brewer or they just lose them completely. For, and they just go to the wall. So what do you think? I now think that these periods, something has to be done to kind of protect smaller businesses but in saying that they have to be run properly as well and uh, maybe sometimes it's a case of they try and run before they can walk and they just try and kind of expand too quickly maybe that's the case but in saying that it's not exactly the best environment right now with production costs going up and also raw ingredients so it's not the greatest time and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of breweries, there's plenty of craft breweries that have gone to the wall but it's a bit kind of uh, hits home when bigger kind of uh, independent breweries start to be affected and things like this. So yeah, not so good. So so what's happening in your area? Um, and what do you think about Black Sheep Brewery? If you're in the UK, probably if you're outside the UK, you won't give a, give a shit about it, to be totally honest, because there's probably plenty of other things going on in your country that are more important from that point of view on the beer front. But uh, what do people think that, maybe aren't that kind of uh, invested in the, the black sheep brewery and things like that, but what do you think in the future of brewing just now? Do you think it really has a, a future or are we just going to lose some more good breweries because of this downturn? And of course, companies like Anheuser, InBev are going to get bigger and Carlsberg and Heineken and all that are just going to get bigger and bigger and... Uh, we just end up with these kind of big breweries churning out the same piss water day in, day out, which is not something I want. Definitely not something you can fuck off with a piss water for all I care. But let's try and get on to something a bit more positive. Well, positive, I honestly don't know if this is positive. I mean, it's positive maybe from the beer front, but from cashing in, well, maybe this is another situation. It's cashing in. Maybe that's why breweries need to do more of this to try and kind of survive. But St. Austro Brewery has launched another limited edition golden ale for the coronation. Now, apparently, the St. Austro Brewery has released a special limited edition cask to celebrate this week's much-anticipated coronation. Now, the beer is called Sovereign. It's 4.3% ABV. It's brewed with 100% British ingredients. We're living in the UK, why not? Although, maybe you're saying that we're not using American kind of hops or whatever, but... Um, I would expect a British beer to use British ingredients. If they may be using more kind of uh, Americanized hops, well, you can source them locally as well. You don't have to basically uh, purchase them from the US, but we'll see what happens. And it's available to order now, and uh, it's only in cask. So I'd like to try it, and I'll see if I can. I should be able to get it, because... There's plenty of uh, St. Austell pubs round about this area. If there's one in every fucking street corner, to be totally honest. You can't get away from them. Like I said, it's like dog piss. There's a stain on every corner with it. You know what I mean? But, yes, another. Well, that's twice now St. Austell was cashed in on the coronation. Um, and what do you think about breweries cashing in? Do you think they're, they're cashing in too much? Or do you think they're cashing in enough 
Or do you think they're just overcharging and just taking everybody for a ride? That type of thing. One thing I also find a bit strange is that sometimes they come out with a celebration ale and then they stop it and then they bring the same celebration ale out again. Is it? Can I you? Yeah. And uh, they bring it out again for another event and, and it's just like, it's the same celebration kind of beer that's regurgitated every time there's a special event or a special occasion, you're thinking. Okay, I'm going to try some new. I mean, or if it's such a good beer, well, release the good beer as a beer in its own right and then come up with a new celebration one, something like that, rather than just keep regurgitating the, the same recipe as a celebration ale. Timothy Taylor. But anyway, and also what we have is another one. And that is another, yes, Arco's Brewery has released a special brew to toast the king. <laughs> There's a surprise, another fucking coronation beer, for Christ's sake. I mean, let's be totally honest. What I'd like to have done, if they're all basically toasting the king and it was all released, I'd love to see an old Charlie boy have a pint of each of one of these celebration beers that are out there. Because Shepherd Neem's doing them. I mean, there's loads of breweries that are doing them. Have a pint of every single one and then go to the coronation and see what state you're in. <laughs> that would have been a good one, eh? Look at Charlie, he's off his tits, look. That would have been good. I would have paid to seen that. That would have been pay-per-view. Look, what's the old king? Look at him, look, look, he's staggering about there. Oh. <laughs> he's nearly over there. Oh, that would be good. That would have been good fun. That would have been entertainment. That would have been, yeah. Get a very good swallow of all your celebration beers and then go and get, go to the coronation. See if anybody notices. Yeah, get it up, yeah, that would be a good one. Mmm. It's a bitter. Mm -hmm. It's a nice bitter too. But we'll cover that in another video. Right, so Arcos has basically released a brew to toast the king. Ooh! To mark the forthcoming coronation of King Charles III, Arcos Brewery have released a special dark ale for a change. Ooh! Mmm! A beer is described as smooth, chocolatey, traditional style dark ale with a surprisingly light, easy drinking body. Brewed using traditional methods in their Victorian brewery. I mean, it's tradition, isn't it? Hmm. I don't know. Do you ever wonder that? I mean, they basically say, you know, it's uh, good food. I like that when you're driving past these kind of restaurants, you say, oh, good food, or home-cooked food. Is it home-cooked food? I thought it was a fucking restaurant. It's not hardly a home then, is it? Do you live there? No. So what do you fucking call it home-cooked food for? That drives me up the wall. Oh, made with, made with the best ingredients. You're hardly going to say, well, it's made with shit ingredients, isn't it? But nobody's that honest. Even if they are using shit ingredients, they ain't going to say it. They'll say it's the best. They'll lie. So I don't see the point of it. Because if I see that, or made with the best ingredients, I'm, the first thing is, oh, fucking is it? That, that's my first reaction. Second reaction is probably not. So I don't see the point of doing it. It's that kind of oxymoron. It's like people say it and you're thinking, I don't believe you. You know, you would expect that would be the minimum. You know, the best ingredients would be the kind of minimum. Exceptional, wonderful, you know. I mean, there's loads of ways you can go past that, but you expect that the best ingredients would be used. But anyway, so there we go. So it's a 4.5%. Uh, it's a limited edition brew. It's called the Coronation Ale. Oh, there you go. We thought long and hard about that. What should we call it? What should we call it? Well, we could call it Charlie. No, no, because uh, if we called it Charlie, then probably uh, his son would be easily using quite more of it. You know what I mean? That kind of ginger one. Because he, he used to like a bit of the old Charlie. Um, what else can we call it? Uh, can we call it beer? Mm, a bit too common. Uh, camera wouldn't like that. Okay. What should we call it then? Uh, ale? That's, that's good. Yeah, we call it ale. That's it. We call it an ale. Right? Uh, what's it for? Coronation? Coronation? Yeah, coronation ale. That's what we should call it. Huh? It's for the coronation. <laughs> Marvellous. <sighs> I'm so tired. Oh, fuck that. Took all, it took it all out of me. Just like that fucking red boy. Anyway. <sighs> Oh, seriously, coronation ale, there we go, eh? Well, there we go, if you fancy a, a dark ale made with the best ingredients in the Victorian brewery and you're quite happy with the 4.5% ABV, 
Then maybe the celebration ale from Arkham's. Maybe the one for you. Aha! Yeah. But anyway. Now, do we have any pricing? No, we don't have any pricing, unfortunately. But it is available through their Grape and Grain Wine and Brewery Warehouse. And it's available to the public in individual bottles and also in a six-bottle celebratory gift case. Or you can get an eight-pack of 500ml bottles as well. There we go. Again, no pricing yet, but uh, I'm sure that's wonderful. And we also have another one, another beer release, although at least this isn't a coronation celebration ale. Thank God. Mm. Sustenance. Anyway, the Salcombe Brewery, which is down near where I am, it's not far from me. So the Salcombe Brewery is delighted to announce the relaunch of their Belgica limited edition Belgian Pale Ale. And it's a 5% EBV. And it's one of the four seasonal beers of their small batch range that will be coming out. Uh, it was first released in March 2022 and it was quickly sold out and it has just been relaunched and is available on tap in pubs and hospitality venues as well in the little tiny baby cans the little baby cans that they call 330 ml the wee baby ones you know the little ones that go little sip little sip yeah you can get 12 of them for 25 pounds there you go <laughs> don't drink them all at once ladies and gentlemen you know it's just calm down here you know yeah, Jesus, God. So you go, 12 little baby cans for 25 quid. Probably not including delivery. And you can also get it from retail outlets. So I will try and see if I can get some of that. But I don't know if I'll be able to carry that big heavy can back to the car. But I'll try. I'll, I'll suffer. <sighs> but anyway, I'm sure it's a wonderful beer. But a bit of interesting beer, and I, well, I'll give it a go and we'll review it. Now, what else has been happening in the news? Um, here's an interesting one. Researchers in Portugal say that drinking one beer a day can have a positive effect on the bacteria in our stomachs. Hold on. Medication type. I do feel healthier. Um, drinkers will be raising a glass to researchers in Portugal who have highlighted the health benefits of consuming beer, which is quite good because we've always been kind of associated that red wine was a good thing to kind of drink in moderation. That was good for you. And people swear by kind of whiskey and the water of life. You know, what, what's the, the secret to your longevity? And they go, oh, I used to have a little whiskey before I went to bed and all that type of stuff. And oh, <laughs> And then after that, I'd have the rest of the bottle. You know, that kind of stuff, you know. So it was always kind of associated. Beer was always classed as, you know, well, it puts on weight. Puts on weight. It's calorific, you know. That's why you get the beer belly. So beer's always been associated with a kind of more unhealthy lifestyle. You know, going for a curry and lager and all these type of things. So any kind of pastime or any kind of things that people were doing that were bad for their health, beer was also kind of usually sitting in the background kind of associated with it unfortunately so beer's got quite a kind of an unhealthy reputation hence why some of the brewers came out with these kind of low calorie beers like the Bud Lights and the Miller Lights and the Coor Lights and the Bottle of Shite I mean the anyway but yes we're trying to kind of uh, be nice to the Bud Light and fraternities and the Cure Light Fraternities in the middle. No, I'll be fuck. Fuck with The beer's like piss. Don't care. But anyway, there has been a bad kind of rep for beer as being kind of an unhealthy drink and it's associated with people with kind of poor health problems. Usually the poor end of society are the kind of class of the beer drinkers, so we're the unhealthy fuckers, you know what I mean? So I could live with that. Just... But apparently that's no longer the case. <laughs> no. Medication type, hold on. Oh, just what the doctor ordered. Beer is beneficial to the composition of the intestine. 
which can help prevent common chronic diseases such as obesity. Are you sure? <laughs> Diabetes. And cardiovascular disease. According to Portugal Centre for Health, Technology and Services Research and the Nova Medical School. Now, they asked healthy men aged from 23 to 58 to take part in the trial, asking them to drink a bottle of beer a day for a month. In fact, at the end of the four weeks, there was an increase in the diversity of the microorganisms that are present in the intestine and the richness of the microorganisms as well. And this is normally associated with beneficial health outcomes with a decreased risk of disease, type 2 diabetes, diabetes, cardiovascular disease and obesity. There you go. So, the problem is, though, is how much is good? How much is enough? And how much is too much? Now, they did ask them this, and they just said that from our tests, we can say that one beer has no negative metabolic impact on the contrary, it even seems to have a positive impact on gut bacteria. But as for 10 beers, well, they can't really say. So at the end of the day, it's, it's moderation. And that's usually kind of what I do. I usually like at least a beer every evening. Now, what usually happens is if I'm doing reviews, I will have a beer that evening because I'm doing the reviews. If not, then I'll have a beer when I'm just relaxing, watching the television or whatever and that. But what I will do is, I won't use a, a pint, I'll use a smaller glass, less than half a pint, and I'll maybe have one, maybe two. So most of the time, I'm maybe just having slightly over half a pint of beer or something like that. But I usually have a couple of small glasses, and that's what I do. And that's how I do it. It's too easy to pour a big one and then just get wired into it. Dangerous times. Dangerous times, you know. Mmm. Now... Here's an interesting one for the UK's kind of uh, bitter drinkers. Barnsley Bitter, historic Yorkshire beer, has been named the best beer in the North East. So Barnsley Bitter, brewed at the Acorn Brewery, and I did a review of it not long ago in uh, Wombwell, um, has taken home the overall champion gold awards in the Siba Northeast Independent Beer Awards, um, which took place at Gateshead Rugby Club over the bank holiday weekend, which was last bank holiday weekend, which was uh, the 1st of May, basically. Um, bank holiday weekend. Overall champion is the best of the best and selected in a final round, judging against all of the other style category winners, with Acorn's flagship Barnsley Bitter, Impressing the judges most with Huddersfield's Magic Rock Brewing Company's Ringmaster uh, taking the overall silver award and Osset's Brewing Company, which is basically the Voodoo Ale, getting the bronze. Now, Osset's also quite a good uh, brewery as well. It's got quite a good reputation and uh, I think they're going to be bringing out some celebration ales actually because they're celebrating 25 years. So they're bringing out some celebration ales, which I'll probably hopefully give you some more news on quite soon. But they've got special beers coming out, so look out for them if you're into that kind of uh, type of beer and you're in the area where you can guess it. Now, we've got two other ones coming up here. So we have an innocent gunner has revealed that the 2023 Isley Whiskey Cask beer is its favourite. Now there's a surprise. What a coincidence. It wasn't 22, it wasn't all the past ones, but it's the present one that's just about to go on sale. They're now announcing that's our favourite. Now you can believe what they're saying, or you can think it's a lot of marketing shit. Hmm, what do I think it is? Oh, I believe them. I do, I do, I trust them. I mean, why would they lie to us? But yes, Emerson Gunn has collaborated with Beam Centauri's Lafroy Distillery to create a 2023 iteration of their Isley Whiskey Cask beer. 
The 7.4% Scottish Red Ale, which is brewed by Emerson Gun every year before being matured on Lafroy cast, has been made in a different way for each annual release. And they're saying that the 2023 release, the other ones, the present version that's on sale, is their favourite. They're saying that's the best one yet. They're not telling it, not saying that after it's all been sold out and it's no longer available. They're telling us right now, just before it goes on sale. <laughs> now, what could be their motivation for telling us that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dubious. I mean, I'm sure it's probably quite a nice sale, but to come out with that type of thing, it just smells of bullshit and bollocks. For me, anyway. What do you think? Do you think they're being honest? Do you think they're do you think they're being disingenuous and just trying to kind of con us and kind of manipulate us into believing that, hey, well, we need to buy this. They say it's the best. It's their favourite. Mm. Yeah, dubious. But if I get some, I will review it. But I'm not going to go out my way to try and find it. Right, last news story of today. Hold on. Do you fancy? I like, I like to self-medicate, you know. It's quite, quite better. It's quite nice, actually. Anyway, and Hauser Bush is back in the news again. There's a surprise. Um, and they still plan to offer free beer via a gift card during the July 4th celebration weekend in the US. Now, let's give a little bit of background. What happened was is the beer company announced previously that they would buy America's next round won 70% of US adults had received at least one dose of the above vaccine for the COVID. There we go. Now, this was all done by the Biden administration who basically set this target. But what happened this week was that the White House finally announced that they have acknowledged that President Biden did not expect to meet his self-imposed deadline target of 70% of US adults at least partly vaccinated by the July 4th celebration weekend. So that tends to kind of make a damp squib for Anheuser-Busch who have already got enough kind of negative press right now with their Bud Light debacle. So they've got to kind of try and kind of save face so they says well never mind we'll, we'll still offer the free beer. I don't know how they're going to do it uh, they're still going to offer the free beer to people who have been vaccinated and can prove it. So they get a free beer and the people that haven't don't. I honestly really don't know. I think it's a case as though I presume it's going to be, well, even if it's below the 70%, if you have been vaccinated, as long as you can prove it, you can get a gift card and you can go and get yourself a free beer from the shop. Hopefully Bud Light. You know, that type of situation. But you never know. So... What do you think about that? Do you think that's a bit of a con? Also, why are they getting involved in this? I mean, again, have they not learned that the politicising, especially from the beer point of view, doesn't really always work? You know, they're just going to leave politics out of it. And if the Biden administration want to set targets, well, let them set their targets and screw them if it doesn't work out. Or cheer from the rooftops if it does. You know, I mean, what's the beer got to do with it? Does it look like, well, well, we'll try and kind of entice them? Is it a marketing ploy? Well, we offer them a free beer, so there we go. So we look good to the Biden administration that we're supporting a, a good cause. Going by what a lot of people know now, we kind of look at the kind of how the pandemic's been handled and all the vaccination and everything else. It hasn't gone very well. And definitely not something to be proud of. But at the end of the day, it looks like anheuser Bruce thought, well, it was a good cause to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. <clears throat> Unbelievable. So what do you think? Do you still think that anheuser Bush just need to take a step back from the old kind of political arena and start acting like a brewery and a beer company? And let's not kind of take sides on any type of things like that and just stay neutral from a political standpoint? I mean, that's what I would think. But what do you think? Do you think they should carry on getting involved in political causes or maybe they should just kind of 
call it quits and just act like a beer company and remain neutral and just concentrate and maybe trying to make some nice beer. Because obviously they're not doing that right now with the piss water they're trying to sell. Medicating again. So anyway, that is the news for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Some good news, some okay news, and obviously some bad news, especially about black sheep. It's a bit unfortunate, but maybe they had it coming. Maybe it was badly managed. I don't know. If you do know anything or you have a comment on it, then please put it down below and we'll have a right good chin wag about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. And bye for now.